Earlier this week, I got in the mail the give a knife, pass a knife, pass around that JT started. And I've been looking at these knives over the week. I've been on call, so I haven't had a whole lot of time to dedicate to this. Um, but I can tell you right offhand, none of these knives really excited me. None of them really caught my eye. So once again, I let Connie take a look at them and choose out of this bunch the one she wanted. Now, last year when we did this, she chose a real steel. I believe it was a real steel. All I can remember is it was, it was the War Wolf. And she actually uses that knife. She likes it quite a bit. So we're going to dive into these knives. And I'll tell you which knife she decided she wanted. And hopefully kick a little more vitality back into this. I'll show you guys what knife I'm going to be placing into the pass around. So first up, we got a real steel. I'm opening it wrong. This is a front flipper. I'm not even sure of the mo model name. The Metamorph. Cool design, front flippers. I, I do like them. Though, you gotta get the knack for opening these things. Really like how the blade is slender. Fits completely in the handle. But, it's real steel. Not really my favorite brand. Uh, and you're gonna find that is a common theme throughout this whole lineup. All of these knives are, from what I can tell, are made in China. And I'm not a big fan of China made knives. Next up we got the Steel Wheel. Again, I'm not sure of the names. I'm gonna have to physically look at the knife in the box. Steel Wheel Piercer. And this knife kind of reminded me of, uh, I believe it's called the Positron from Spyderco, the way the, the choil, the finger choil here prevents your, your finger from going forward on the blade, just the size of it, uh, the overall design, it really reminds me of the Spyderco Positron, I believe that's the name of it. Pocket clip is really, really thin. If you get that caught on something, it's going to bend quite easily. It is a, it is a deep carry though, so that's, that's a plus. The lanyard hole doesn't get in the way. The liner lock, the liner lock is very easy to engage, but just opening this thing, it's not the greatest, kind of difficult to, kind of difficult to do it anyway, but a spidey flick I found. Not really in my wheelhouse. This is the Bastion, again, don't know the name of it. This is the Falcon D2 Steel. Carbon fiber, two-tone blade. I do like the, the way this one feels, the, the weight of it. The carbon fiber is nice. I don't like coated blades. Two-tone blades are not really my thing. It is a, uh, it's like a bolster lock, kind of. Bolster liner lock, whatever you want to call this thing. But being a two-tone blade, being Tanto, not really, again, in my wheelhouse. I'm not sure who makes Bastion knives being D2 steel. I'd imagine it's going to be in China somewhere. It's just a company I've never heard of. The knife itself is kind of cool, but given my quirks, not for me. This is the Zahn Knives Company Stedman model. It's got JG10 blue backspacer. It's just an extraordinarily large knife way too big for anything that I would make use of. Kind of reminds me of a, a SOCOM in that, in that fashion. You know, it's a, it's a really neat blade, really cool design, but just too large for practical use in my personal rotation. It's black wash coated, JG10 scales. I really don't like those. They just look like cheap plastic to me. The hardware is flathead, which is not something you see very common. It's a good flipper. The blade is so heavy. The knife does close on its own. I won't go so far as to call it a free falling blade, but it is heavy enough that it will close itself. Just too large for me. 
Again, never heard of this company before. CRKT. It's got a neat milled pocket clip, but man, this thing, as small as it is, it's heavy. It's heavy as a rock. It's a full stainless steel construction. It's a flipper. Hollow grind blade. Let's see, this is the model 3700. It says GSD. I'm not sure what that is. This is on IKBS bearings. It is a frame lock. Again, it's all stainless construction. If you keep your thumb or your finger on that frame lock, it doesn't want to deploy very well. All around budget friendly knife, but again, not for me. I prefer lightweight blades, and this one is just way too heavy. This is a Tucson. I have no idea what model it is. Does not say. It's just got a graphic of a tree. I don't know what kind of tree that is. Tanto type blade. It's a little thinner up at the Tanto, it feels like, than the main flat. I like the design. Again, slender. The blade fits entirely in the handle, kind of like a Quaken. I, I really like those type of blades. But it's just a little too long and I hate this blade grind. I, what, what's wrong with just a standard regular old drop point? What's wrong with just sheep's foot blades? Why do companies insist on doing grinds like this? Is it really that popular among knife enthusiasts? I, I guess it is. It's just not for me though. I, I really don't like that type of blade shape funky grinds just give me a standard classic drop point and I'm a happy camper now this knife is a free falling blade it's on bearings of some sort some sort of ball bearing it's heavy again the blade way too long for my own personal uses none none in this category are appealing to me just the blade shapes the the weight um, coated blades, tantos, I'm not into that sort of thing. Finally, we're going to come up to the last knife, and this is actually the one Connie decided to choose. This is the Damned EDC. I believe it's called the Wraith. Yeah, it comes with a little, a little card here. It is the Wraith, Thai, Black, Blue, Black DLC, M390 steel. It is a little chunky. It is a little heavy. However, out of all these knives, this is the only one that she uh, she felt like she she could deal with. Black coating. She's the same as me. She doesn't like them very well. But given the lineup that we have here, this is what we're going to go with. It's got a nice milled pocket clip. Fairly deep carry, though it's not fully deep carry. Sheep's foot blade, M390. Not quite a free falling blade, but I'd imagine with a little, little lubrication, maybe some cleanup, that would be just fine. So this is the guy we're going to choose. And in its place, as I said, I want to kick this up. And get a little more enthusiasm into it. What we got here is a USA made Microtech UTX70. You can see why I'm going to relinquish this one. It is a two-tone blade in itself and it's serrated. However, the UTX is such a small little knife, I really don't think the serrations are going to be a big deal. Anybody using this, they're probably just going to open letters, maybe tape on a package or something. I don't foresee this being a hard use knife. If they ever need to be sharpened, all you gotta do is send it in and uh, they'll take care of you. Now it may take five or six weeks to get back to you, but they'll take care of you. So this is gonna be my contribution. And this one is going to be the knife we remove. Hopefully the next person that gets this line up should they choose the Microtech out of this lineup, they'll put something of equal or greater value in. 
I know this started off again as, as a, a budget friendly kind of uh, pass around, but looking this knife up, it's not, it's not exactly cheap. So I don't want to throw in a $30 knife in its place. I'd rather put something of a little more value in there. Well guys, hope you enjoyed this video. If you have any questions or comments, as always, leave them below. Y'all have a good one.